Hey guys, it's Dan from Phono Lab here. Uh, this is a video I've wanted to do for a, a quite a while now, um, and it concerns um, our Ableton template that we use for cutting. Um, yeah, just wanted to share it with you all, um, and you can use it with or without our automation. Um, just wanted to go over the benefits of it and, and why we think you should use it. And yeah, so I'll start off with the with the benefits of the, our template. I'll talk about, about the hardware you need and the VSTs required, especially if you don't run Ableton. Uh, I'll show you a routing diagram. I'll show you an example of a cut where I've scratched the disc um, and then we'll see what that looks like on the playback. Um, and basically the whole idea of this is to, it's another layer of quality control when it comes to doing your, doing your cuts, making sure you don't send things out which have errors in. So yeah, so let's get into the benefits of the template. Before we were doing this, we were using um, the first cut groove. Or that's where we we're putting our playback stylus. We were putting it on the first cut groove. Um, and, you know, this means that if uh, there's something wrong with the plastic, playback stylus pops out of that first groove and goes into the center and you know that there's an issue there. So you go back prior to um, where it popped out of the groove and you have a listen back and you know if it plays all the way through then there's no error and if it doesn't then you know to redo the cut so what we, we were finding using this method and i'll put a little diagram down which may help explain it but because it's on the first groove sometimes uh you could overcut in the previous groove well this is our theory anyway so you'd overcut the previous groove and you wouldn't hear that issue because it's still tracing the innermost groove the playback stylus just follows that that groove so the only way that you could tell that a groove was overcut was by having it or a groove behind that first cut groove we were just finding that we were sending a few records out and they were skipping in certain areas of the track and we were like why is this happening so this is our theory is that tracking on the uh, first cut groove sometimes misses errors uh, especially in terms of overcutting so uh, i've developed a system where on every cut we record our our playback stylus um, and that enables us to check for errors in the cut uh, it also highlights any skips and pops and whatever and anything that might be happening within the cut so the second benefit and this is a benefit that I forgot initially when I was talking about this and recording it, um, is that after every cut, you basically have a visual representation of what is on your record. So it allows you just to compare both the digital file and the cut audio, and it allows you to visually see if there's any issues with your cut, because you will be able to see uh, areas where the the stylus has skipped and also areas where you know there might be a scratch or just any imperfection on the disc so that's really a, a really useful tool especially if you're not stood by the lathe all day you know like whilst the cut's going we're not we have the automation set up we're often doing emails and other things or even though we are monitoring through our monitors uh, but it just gives you a quick um reference to see what is actually on the disc uh, which is obviously a huge benefit you don't need to go through and find out where the errors are you can just pinpoint them exactly and then listen to them straight away as well so this is the audio routing diagram for our system we have the master outs of ableton um, obviously through usb going into the ssl 2 plus the outputs of the SSL go into the main unit if you're using it. If you're not, then you're using a Q3 curve. From the main unit or bypassed if you're not using, go straight into an amplifier, which goes into your cutting head. From the turntable tone arm, we're going into a Behringer PP400 preamp. The outputs of that are being fed into the SSL 2 Plus, the inputs there and the TRS headphone output is going to a Behringer RX1602 line mixer, then into a big knob, then into our monitors. This is so we can hear the 
cut happening in our studio. So the inputs of the SSL coming from the turntable are going into Ableton, which we have selected in on that particular track and we've armed it so it's recorded. Um, we then feed both that turntable playback and the digital file. We send those to outputs three and four in Ableton. Uh, this allows us to monitor both those channels using the crossfader with headphones via the output three and four headphone monitor. You could just press a button on the SSL and you can listen to both the main one and two outs and also the three and four outs. I'll just maybe explain our Ableton project here. So you can see here we have uh, audio channel here and we have our automation uh, MIDI track which is um, for our automation. We have a turntable playback track, uh, which is set as in. We also have our line channel here. So what's going on is we are, our audio and our automation are within a, within a cut group, which is sent to the master. And this master has a mono on the bass and also a Q3 curve on it. Well, the audio from here is sent to the master channel and we have our automation track there as well. Um, the audio is also routed through to the line channel. And basically this means that we can listen to the, to the digital audio without having our, 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 like a head curve and the bass mono on it. So it gives us a true representation of what's cutting. And then we have our uh, turntable playback. So using the inputs one and two through our audio interface, we're recording the turntable playback. This allows us to monitor in real time the turntable playback and the line. So you see both of these are set to in and we've set our external output to three and four. So we use an audio interface, an SSL 2 plus, uh, which is solid state logic, it's a two in, it's a four out, and it has the ability for us to monitor both the uh, main outs, one and two, and also outputs three and four. But yeah, there's a button where we can send, um, we can either monitor outputs one and two or outputs three and four. So we send both our turntable playback and our line to outputs three and four. Now, a really cool function of Ableton is the crossfader. So if you're down here on the master channel on the session view, this little X opens up a crossfader. And what this allows you to do, just like a crossfader on a DJ mixer, is you can move that to the left it's at now or the right. And that allows you to monitor whatever tracks you've got set up on either the left or the right. So you can see on the turntable playback, so let me just turn the crossfader on and off and you'll see we have A and B appear under each track. So on the turntable playback, it's set to A, which is on the left and on the line input, it's set to B, which is on the right. So when I'm monitoring on the left, I'm hearing the turntable playback. And when I'm monitoring on the right, I'm listening to the line. So the, the digital audio. Um, so this is really handy for when, when you're in a cut just to compare the, the two audio sources. We use it to um, make small amendments when we're making a cut or if you're doing a test cut. So that's really useful to have. And I've also got these key mapped to square brackets as well. So you can just quickly monitor between the two. Um, so that's the overview of our template. I'll just go back here. If you do use our automation, um, you can see that in the automation uh, chant, uh, track here, on the session view, we've got every single uh, MIDI clip that has a function within our system. So the blue ones you can use on the automatic cut page and the manual page, and the red clips there you can only use within the manual cut page. We're going to do a video on, on how you can get really creative with your cuts using these. But just for an example, if you want to bring one of those into your arrangement view, just click on it, press tab, and then you just drop it in the automation channel here. So um, what I'll do now is show you uh, a cut. I've purposely damaged a disc, and we're gonna see um, what that looks like. 
Just in addition to that, I've also set up an additional MIDI mapping here so that you don't need to press record every time you start. In a previous video, I show you how to map your play and stop function to Ableton's uh, transport controls. So you can see here, I've just added the note C2, which is start to the global record. And just to show you how to do that again, I'll delete that. So you click on the record in your manual mapping um, setup and you just hit play. And now I have record, global record mapped to the play button as well, which means every time the door starts, it will also record on the turntable playback, which is armed. So every time you do a cut, you'll record that cut. Once you've completed a cut, this is kind of what the project will look like. You'll have the recorded audio from the turntable on the turntable track and the digital file there. So I'll just show you what to do in order to compare the two after you've cut. And I'll also show you an example of overcutting and an example of uh, imperfections on the disc um, and what they look like. So what you want to do first is mute the cut group. And next we're going to line up the two audio files. You don't need to do this, but it just makes it easier when you're comparing. So make sure they're lined up. doesn't need to be exact. Then you turn uh, the in so that it's off. And you can press play anywhere in the track. And right now we're listening to the digital file, which is routing through. And now we're listening to the turntable uh, record recorded cut. So the way that I'm changing those is just using the two square brackets. When I hit the right square br bracket, it goes on to the line audio and when I hit the left one it goes onto the turntable the cut the cut record so that's a real quick way to just compare the two but I mean this cut looks fine I know that it cut fine I'm gonna show you an example of what happens when you overcut so um, this cut has already been made I pump the volume way too much for the LPI and you can hear that uh, it's skipping in those sections because the input volume is quite loud you can't see it so clearly but if you zoomed out of that audio file you'll be able to see the areas which are problematic so finally I'll show you um, what happens when the disc has been damaged and you might have imperfections on your plastic and what that looks like. Um, I'm just recording this record in. You can hear pops there. And you can see what they look like as well. That's the problematic area. When you zoom out, you can really see these peaks. So it's easy just to have one look at the recorded audio and it's easy to go back and listen to it if you think something's an issue and compare it with the original digital file.